It is now a battle of my candidates who win this election. There are only two candidates, my candidates and others. My candidate is the candidate to beat in this election. This is our discussion today. My name is EDS. Ever since veteran actor and lawyer Kenneth Okonkwo left the All Progressive Congress, APC, and joined the Labour Party, he does not joke with the candidature of the Labour Party presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi. Any discussion on media rounds involving Kenneth Okonkwo becomes a debate between his candidates and the other candidates. Kenneth Okonkwo believes a particular candidate should have been disqualified by now if we are a serious country. Who is that candidate? Let's find out. Watch. If there is anybody that his team has been extinguished completely, is that of Atiku Abubakar, who, of course, should have, should have been disqualified by now by going to the North and making a genocidal statement that Northerners should vote for not only. This was what caused genocide in Rwanda. When Hutus, we are told that they should not support Tutsis because they are cockroaches. Atiku Abubakar went to the North and said Northerners should support only the people from the North, not Yoruba, not Igbo. That is ethnic profiling. That's genocidal statement. Atiku knows he has failed. What he's trying to do now is to make sure he destroys our democracy after he has failed. And he should be called to order. I next should be implementing section 97 of the Electoral Act now on Atiku. Because that's a criminal offense. Trying to profile ethnic and religious groups. So it is Atiku Abubakar that I've always said he is very unfit to be president. And not only that he's unfit. He is it now a threat to our democracy? Mr. Okonkwo believes Atiku's statement is genocidal and shouldn't be tolerated in our political space and democracy. I still wonder what will make an acclaimed unifier such as Atiku Abubakar make such a statement. Moving from here, the presidential candidate of the APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, was reported to have said that the bimodal voter accreditation system, popularly known as the Beavers Machine, would destroy our democracy after the outcome of the Ocean State governorship election, which didn't go in the favor of his party. A statement Kenneth Okonkwo believes is geared towards discrediting the wonderful job the Beavers machine has been designed to do in our elections going forward. Here, Mr. Kenneth speak on this. Watch. You recall that after the Ocean State election, there was only one person that said that the Electoral Act 2022 was going to destroy our democracy. And the person is Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He made it clear. And of course, with profound respect, sir, Electoral Act 2022 will not destroy our democracy. It will destroy the insatiable appetite of politicians, probably like you, to manipulate our election. You know, after the Oshun State election, Adeleke said that the difference between Electoral Act 2010 and Electoral Act 2022 is in his losing or winning election. You know that in 2010 Electoral Act, the overvoting is calculated, not based on accredited voters, but based on the manual register. And can you imagine the absurdity of it, that you could bring, bring a result that is actually more than the people that presented themselves to vote, and you have nothing in law to defend yourself. But in 2022, you saw that those things we are taking care of. So the Beavers has provided a shield whereby, based on the accredited voters, accredited voters, that is what overvoting is based on. So the politicians now know that it is difficult to maneuver these things, and they are now planting their own people inside INEC. The Beavers machine will short checkmate election irregularities. Never again will number of voters be higher than the number of accredited voters going forward. Anyone who tries to discredit the Beavers machine must have some hidden agenda yet to be known to the public. Now, there is this permutation about how a particular candidate will win this election squarely. You need to see this video. Watch. First, PDP is not even on the ballot. How? What because do you know? the strength of the PDP is in the southeast, which has been eroded by Peter Obi. The strength of the PDP, next, is in the South South. With the WK never to support Atiku, South South is gone. It's gone. And with, with Udom not picked as the vice presidential candidate, 
I don't think he can use his money to counter Wike's influence in the Southeast. And Wike is not only strong in the Southeast. Wike commands 14 states of Nigeria for PDP. All of them follow him. Five serving governors, nine gubernatorial candidates outside PDP control states, all belong to Wike. It is what Wike decides that will happen in the PDP. So, and the Northeast is completely Konkoso is How? born. Yes, because How? Konkoso will win Taraba, he will win Adamawa, he will win Gombe. Has he done? He before? will win Bauchi. Has he done? Including before? governorship. Just let look. I don't want to talk frivolities. You know that. You are my witness. Everything I have said here had come to pass. And Nigerians will be a mute. Hold except, on. except that you told me in 20, before 2019 that Atiku Abubakar was going to win the election. He won. He was denied. A team fellow of the new Nigerian People's Party, NMPP, Al Haji Buba Galadima, believed that the candidate of his party, Rabio Musa Kwankwaso, will sweep all Northern votes, leaving the other candidates to scrabble for votes in the other regions. And that will be enough to make him win the election in one ballot. Will that really be enough? Going by this statement, this actually makes the candidate, Rabio Musa Kwankwaso, a regional candidate. Is that what Nigerians need at this time? Finally, among the leading candidates for the presidential election come 2023, who do you think is the most detribalized candidate and most likely to be accepted by all Nigerians? Hear Kenneth Okonkwo do his analysis on this. Watch. <laughs> Now, let's talk about sectional politics. As I have said, Atiku went to the north and said, Northerners should vote only somebody from the north, not Yoruba, not Igbo. What can be more ethnic than that? At, uh, Tinubu went to Ogun State and said, it is the turn of the Yorubas. And when it comes down to the Yoruba, it is my turn. That is the meaning of a miloko. What can be more sectional than that? Peter B went to the Igbo people and at the risk of losing their vote, he told them, do not vote for me because I'm Igbo. Vote for me because I'm a man of competence, character, and capacity. Does Peter B and have the Nigerians, to run the said, affairs of this government? Nigerians gun? do not... It is not the turn of anybody. In 2023, it is the turn of Nigerians. Peter B has displayed an uncanny character in reality capacity in reality oh can your finished. candidate win the election soon and very soon before the election reaches when the two candidates will unravel and i'm sure they're already unraveling then it will now be people be and others because then collectively in the polling poll they will not be have up to five percent and whenever you don't reach up to five percent you'll be classified as others so actually it is going to be people be and others there is no other candidate at this very stage in our democracy we need a president for all, a focused leader that will serve as a unifier and bring every region and tribe together and give everyone the sense of belonging. That candidate we will vote for come 2023. Get ready to speak with your PVC. I'll see you again. Please subscribe to this news channel. Let me be your news blog and I'll keep you updated.